Hey guys, I told you this week that there might not be a video, but I thought, ah, I'd like to get something out to you guys. So this one is going to talk about scuba diving for a few minutes because of my trip that's happening starting tomorrow. So why do I recommend diving? Because of what we appreciate in our tanks already. We have these beautiful corals and beautiful fish, but to see them in nature and see how they act completely without human interaction, that, that's beautiful. And the more opportunities you have to get in the ocean, do it. Uh, I waited a long time to get the opportunity myself. And I can only tell you that you should do it now. Don't put it off for 20 years <laughs> like I did. It's fantastic to see big, healthy fish out in nature. And I love looking for structures, looking for piles of rocks, uh, sunken wrecks. Whatever is out there, that's where you're going to find the livestock. You're not gonna come across a lot of stuff in wide open water. And when there's just sand and nothing for a long time, you'll see the occasional fish. But when you can get up against rock walls and get into under piers and uh, the dive masters, they'll take you where you need to go. They know all the best spots. They have the funniest names for some of these spots. Uh, there was one in Florida. Uh, see, the names are so dumb, I can't even remember them. It was like pickles and something. And there was another one that was called chickens and hens. What does that have to do with the ocean? I have no idea, but you know what? They knew exactly where to take me. And I am looking very much forward to all the dives I'm gonna be doing over this next weekend. So there's stuff on Friday and there's stuff on Monday, but let me get into this. I leave and you know, I don't know, about six hours I should be going through TSA trying to get on the plane and then I'll be heading to the Dominican Republic. And there is dive planning for Friday and Friday night. And so I've got a bunch of stuff here on the floor. I just want to show you really quick. When it comes to scuba diving, you have to take a class. And I highly recommend that you do this. And if you've ever noticed my website, at the very top of the website, I've got a couple of divers. And I also have them on my business card. So people have always assumed that I'm a diver. But the fact is, is that I put those divers on the card as a goal of what I wanted to achieve. And so it was on my website and on my uh, business cards for some time. And then finally, I was able to achieve that goal. I got my classes, I got certified, and I started spending money on another hobby. The scuba hobby is not inexpensive, and you can spend a lot of money on gear, or you can keep it very inexpensive and just rent everywhere you go, especially if you're only gonna dive once or twice a year. Myself, I felt more comfortable owning my own equipment, and I wanted to be able to take my equipment with me on my trips and be familiar with everything and where it is located on my body and not have to worry about parts being broken, uh, rented items that aren't up to snuff. Eh, call me paranoid. I decided this is what I wanted to do. So the first thing you have to do to go to a scuba class is you have to buy your fins, uh, the boots that go with them, uh, mask, snorkel, and um, then of course the class itself. So I wanted to show you what I have here. So the fins are probably my biggest pride and joy. These are Apollo fins. And they're different from flippers that you normally have as a kid growing up. Because with a flipper, you just stick your foot in there and it holds on around your ankle. But this one actually fits around a boot. So you would take your foot, put it in the boot, and then you'd put this in there, pull the strap behind it, and now they're locked on your feet. And then you can pull them back off again and you can actually walk back in from the shore or be on the deck of the boat and not have to worry about being barefoot, which is nice. The uh, fins were really expensive because I went high end on these and I spent about $250 on the fins alone. So they're not flippers. Then I bought myself, uh, I mentioned this mask and snorkel. So, well, that would have been awkward if I had not had my mask with me. That's why you check everything you have when you're packing. This is a mask that has prescription lenses since I wear glasses and I can get them replaced to match whatever strength I need for my eyes. I also noticed at the dive shop that they even have what kind of looks like a little magnifying bifocal that can glue on the bottom of a normal mask to give you some lower field focus. But this has worked out fine for me. Some people have mentioned that they can see just fine with a normal mask, even though normally they need glasses. But for me, a prescription mask was the way to go. Now, you have to breathe. And so there's a thing called a regulator. And these are something you would usually rent unless you want to buy them. As I mentioned before, I bought mine. This one, it's basically an octopus. This will connect to the air tank on your back. 
and this will be your breathing apparatus. This extra hose goes to a secondary breathing apparatus in case this one fails so you have a backup. And then I have what's called an integrated dive computer that has a compass. And this allows me to actually measure how much air is in my tank at all times. A lot of people like to wear one that's on their wrist. And it's just a separate watch. They could even do a Bluetooth connection between the watch. I kind of like the idea of being tethered to the tank and knowing exactly how much air is in the tank at all times. Call it old school. It just seemed like the way to go for me. That gear right there probably cost me about $2,000 total. <laughs> so uh, that stays with me on the plane. Um, I have an iPhone 5 that I'm going to film with, and it's going to go in this water shot case. And I can use the buttons on the back to actually trigger it for video and for photography. It just fits right inside. All you have to do is have a full battery and make sure you have room on the phone for recording. And this is an old phone I don't use anymore, so it's perfect for dives. And if it gets flooded and ruined, it's okay. It's an old phone I don't use. The uh, next thing that, I, that you absolutely have to have to dive is your BCD. And this is a vest that you wear. When you take your scuba classes, they will teach you how these work, what they can do, and how to put them on, and what everything does. This vest right here has pockets on both sides. It has the ability to remove both weights from both sides in an emergency, even by a buddy. And it has to be all strapped and buckled on, and you want your dive buddy to inspect and make sure nothing's been forgotten. So now I'm rigged up. This is my secondary air. If the first one failed, I can now use this one instead to breathe. Inside of the BCD is a integrated weight pocket. Your weights fit in here. They just slide in here. Depending on whether you're in freshwater or saltwater, determines how much weight you need, matching your body type. You want to have just enough weight to help you sink, but not so much that it pulls you down. The reason you have this large vest is because as you're diving, you might need to adjust your buoyancy so that you're hovering right over the reef. So here's your reef and you want to hover. You don't want to sink and slam into it. You don't want to float too high. So by adjusting the buttons on here, you add a little bit more air or you let a little bit of air out and that inflates or deflates your vest. You also have extra things you can pull on to let air out of the back, let air out the bottom, let air out the other bottom. <laughs> There's a lot of gear. Then I also just recently picked this up because I'm going to be doing a night dive and so this will fit on the front when I'm all wrapped up. And it's a flashlight that's on a tether that goes right back in. One of the best things you can be as a diver is self-contained and keep everything on your body very close. You don't want things dangling off of you that could snag on the reef. So this would be connected to my belt. It won't go anywhere. I use the flashlight. It goes right back in here. My computer is actually connected with a clip here to keep it against my body so it doesn't just dangle behind you. You'll notice a dive... Uh, touristy places where they hand you gear you'll see stuff just dangling off of them like tentacles that's not a good thing for diving all right and then uh finally and this is a very inexpensive item but this is just a snorkel and it's nice to be able to switch to a snorkel and not waste the air in your tank so when you're at the surface you can just breathe with this normally and if you were in a situation where you were not going to be able to get back to the boat for a while you can be at the surface and relax and just breathe slowly through the snorkel I have a bag to put all my gear in, which is a huge mesh bag. It holds a lot of weight, but it's a backpack. So I can throw everything I'm wearing inside here, and then I can just haul that back to the hotel when I'm done. And uh, for this trip, I went ahead and I bought something called a rash guard. I've been wanting one for a while. So this one here, it's a medium. It's very snug, kind of looks like a wetsuit. It actually has UV protection, so I won't get as burned, because I know I'm going to get burned and it's up to the neck and then full length sleeves and i tried it on and you can see i still need to lose weight <laughs> swim trunks you have to have your dive log where you write down all the different dives you did how deep you went uh, how long you were down what interesting things that happened how much weight you wore if you wore a wetsuit if you didn't wear a wetsuit uh, if you walked in or if you took a boat to the dive site there's a lot of little details it's nice to keep track of that and then most importantly, you have to have your paddy cards with you, which are your proof that you are certified to dive. You have to show these at your dive location. So I've got a few of these because I've been earning them for the last couple of weeks. And then, of course, my original open water card is right here. But this has my advanced open water, 
My nitrox isn't here yet, but I have a printout of the temporary, so I can use that this weekend. All right, guys, I will try to film some cool stuff, and eh, if I can sneak some kind of a, a tiny vlog out over the weekend, maybe. I'll try. I have no idea what the Wi-Fi situation is going to be at the hotel. Two things I forgot to mention in this video that I had every intention to include. On the 22nd of October, I'm going to be in Cleveland. And that is going to be the frag swap for the Cleveland Club C, C, S E A. And they're doing a frag swap, and I'll be speaking that day, so be sure you're there. And then on the 29th, and then on the 29th of this month, I'll be speaking at the Oklahoma frag swap, and they call that Fragtober. So that's two different chances this month where we can meet up if you want to, and we can talk about whatever brings, brings you happiness in this hobby. Uh, you can get some frags. I mean, that's the whole point for what to do here. So I want to give you the heads up on that. I also am going to be going to New Jersey, uh, I believe, November 11th. So that one's coming up as well. So lots of opportunities to bounce around. I'm traveling like crazy. I still need to travel to see my parents. And I haven't had a chance yet this year. So that is also my list of things to do. And then there's a rumor about a trip to Cincinnati. I know there's a trip to Florida in January. So lots of different speaking events. So wherever you are in the nation, if you're nearby, be sure to make the trip and attend these events because when these organizers put together these conferences, it's for you. It's not for them. They don't benefit. You benefit. So you need to go. And if you don't go, you actually hurt the opportunity of them doing it again. So don't be lazy. Just like I tell you, test your water all the time. Change your water if you're, uh, you know, you're so inclined. These are the things that you should be doing. You should be going to your local events whenever you possibly can because once they're gone, you'll regret that you didn't go. And those, that, that's my whole speech. That's, that's my argument. Just do it. So wish me luck, and if everything goes well, I'll be back next week.